Senator Nina Turner appeared on CNN, and I want to share what she said, not necessarily because I think that you're going to be surprised uh, at what she's saying, because really, I mean, we've all been saying this. She's been saying this for years, but this is important because of who she's saying this to. CNN's normie audience probably doesn't come to this conclusion, even if it really is seemingly common sense. You know, all of this conversation about Biden being primaried in 2024, his lower approval rating, it wouldn't be happening if Biden and the Democratic Party actually satisfied their base and delivered. But the reason why we're having this discussion, even if you don't want to admit it, if you're a Democratic Party loyalist, is because they have been demonstrable failures. Take a look. You know, Senator, you're a Democrat who has been critical of Joe Biden over the years. This news reported by Isaac this morning is that Democrats are not at this point going to primary Joe Biden and they're warning others to not do the same. In other words, stay out of this. Do you think that's the right path? Well, this is John and Brian. This is about life and death. So if the Democrats, my party, wants to push back the neo-fascist uh, tidal wave that is happening from the courts to the streets, then it is going to have to deliver and change material conditions for the people. Yes, people should come out to vote as if their lives depend on it in November, this November, next November, and every November after that. But what my party must do, since it controls all the levers of power in both chambers of the United States Congress and the presidency, is they need to contort themselves through public policy as if their lives depend on it. People need relief in this country. And one way to back off any primary challenge, should there be one, is to deliver for the people. It is to give them something that they can feel. It is to cancel student debt. It is to go ham on this extremist Supreme Court. It is to embody the spirit and tradition of President FDR. And one of my fears, John and Brianna, in this particular moment, since, the, since people are so desperate and the pain is so deep, is that this Congress and this president are not bold enough for the moment. So we should not be basing the whole measure on what is best for the Democratic Party. We should measure based on what is best for Big Mama and Big Daddy and who where people are misunderstood, whether it's the rural hood, the urban hood, or the suburban hood. That is how you settle whether or not there will be a primary deliver for the people. That was great. Now there's more. I'll, I'll play a second clip for you in a second. But when she said that she fears that Congress and this president, they're just not bold enough to meet this moment, that resonated with me because I feel like it is provably true, right? I mean, look at what's happening. The Supreme Court has gone rogue. It's been taken over by far-right theocratic zealots, and they're taking away right after right after right. And there's no expectation that Democrats will react with the urgency that is required for this particular moment. So everyone currently in the country is catastrophizing, thinking about, well, how long until we lose marriage equality? How long until the right to con uh, contraception goes away? Is it two years, three years? And now... Knowing that the Supreme Court is taking on more v. Harper, how long can we even elect leaders? Because they could kill democracy effectively in the United States, and that's not a hyperbole. I did a video on this. It's pinned to my Twitter page. Watch it, because right now, the Supreme Court poses a grave danger to democracy. And the problem is that Democrats, they're saying that Republicans are the problem, but they're not acting. If you truly believed that Republicans pose a threat to democracy, then you can't just repeat vote because you didn't pass voting rights. I mean, if they go through with Moore v. Harper and the Supreme Court finds that independent state legislature theory is valid and state legislatures controlled by Republicans can choose the presidents and choose members of the House in perpetuity, then the power to vote is even further diminished and we don't even have a good democracy to begin with. To call it a democracy is really, I think, a stretch. So, yes, of course, you're going to tell your voters that voting is important. But the problem with the Democratic Party is that that's their only solution. Oh, well, you want real codified? Vote. But they're not actually wielding the power that they have for the limited amount of time before the election. And that's a problem. And that's what Nina Turner is going to get more into in this next clip here. Let's take this to the streets. The American people don't have time 
for folks to sit up here and pontificate. We know exactly why those governors are dipping their toe in the water, because it's just in case. So they send in a little signal that if indeed the president runs for re-election, we, not go, we won't run against you, but just in case something happens. Let's go ahead and tell the truth about this. So Mr. Trippy has the luxury of being cool, calm, and collected about what is happening in this country while people's lives are being destroyed. We understand that the Republicans are recalcitrant. They are no good. Today's Republicans are no good, and they are a clear and present danger to democracy as we know it. So if we do know that, that, then let's act like we know it. Our, my party has control of the Congress and the presidency, and they should wield that power as if they have that power. They should wield it as if the neo-fascists that are trying to take over this country, starting with that Supreme Court, is a danger and use the power on behalf of the people. Don't play with it. Don't be timid with it. Use it. And one of the ways you can use it is to expand the court. The, the United States Congress, there is a bill pending to expand the court. The the president is kind of whole hum on that. They should use uh, federal lands to allow abortion clinics to be there. They should ensure that throughout this country that the abortion drug is available, even in states where, the, like my state, where you can no longer get an abortion, even, you know, in six weeks. We must use that power in a way that gives people something that they can feel and stop playing games. This is an emotional time for this country. Yes, the Republicans are dangerous and my party needs to act like it. It's just like having some firefighters come to your house, John and Brianna, and they got all the equipment and the fire chief says, you know what? We can't come in yet because we got to wait for a few more firefighters, even though they have all the tools at their disposal to put out the fire. My message to my party is that we have all the tools at our disposal to put out the fire and we need to get at it so that people are more motivated to come out, not just because of clear and present danger to our democracy, but that we have elected leaders who feel their pain and who will ameliorate their pain. This so I is, want my party to stop playing games and let's get the business. This Everything she's saying is spot on. If you believe that Republicans pose a clear and present danger to democracy, then you have to act like they pose a clear and present danger to democracy. You can't hope and pray that you get a couple of more senators so you can abolish the filibuster more easily. No, you act right now. If Manchin and Cinema refuse to budge, then you use carrots, you use sticks. Uh, Biden can fire his wife, who he gave a position. You can try to, I don't know, coax them into supporting abolishing the filibuster or creating a carve-out to the filibuster to codify Roe by saying, here's some pork for West Virginia. I don't care what you have to do, but you have to try. And the fact that they're refusing to try right now and they're just telling you that the onus is on you and you have to vote is completely unacceptable. Of course, people need to vote. Voting is important, but they're diminishing the importance of their role. They're diminishing their responsibility. And that is not acceptable. Do you want to know what the former RNC chief Michael Steele said about Republicans? He said that when they retake power, without hesitation, they will get rid of the filibuster and institute a nationwide abortion ban because, quote, that's the difference politically between the two parties. Republicans will go, oh, yeah, the Constitution and the filibuster, all the tradition, the sanctity of the Senate. They don't give a rat's patootie about that when it's the bottom line line in politics and power. And that's the difference between the two parties. Republicans are evil, but they're effective. They know how to wield power, whereas Democrats, they don't know how to wield power. And I'd argue that they're not necessarily good. They're not, they're not as evil as Republicans. They're still pretty evil, but what good that they want to do, such as codifying Roe, you know, uh, bringing back voting rights, electoral reform, they just, they don't know how to wield power effectively. When they have power, they don't use it. And that's a really serious issue. And I love the analogy that Nina Turner used about the firefighters. Imagine you call the fire department and you expect them to put out a fire at your house, but they show up with all the gear, all the equipment, but they say, well, we're not going to do anything because we don't have enough firefighters here. It's unacceptable. And that's a perfect analogy for this current moment. Democrats are in control of all branches of uh, government, excluding the Supreme Court, of course, but they have the White House, they have Congress and the Senate. To not act, or at least try to wield power, is an abdication of duty. It's being complicit. 
to the harm that Republicans are doing to this country. And as one Twitter user put it, Uvalde was like a microcosm for America. The GOP is the active shooter and the Democrats are the cops dithering around outside, not helping any kids, but doing their best to prevent anyone else from helping them. America's trying to talk its way out of handcuffs to save some kids. And that is exactly right. You have their entire base crying out and they're not meeting the moment. I mean, when it comes to the issue of abortion, Democrats are united. Centrists and leftists agree that Roe must be codified. Action must be taken to protect the right of women to choose. And so when you have your whole party currently united on something, to not use that to galvanize the base and act and act with authority, it's just, it's criminal in my opinion. Now there's a plethora of reasons, legal, institutional, generational reasons as to why the Democratic Party refuses to deliver for their base. When the Republican Party, their base constantly gets what they want. Every deranged priority that they want, they have lawmakers that have consistently tried to at least deliver. And the reason why that is, is because the GOP fears the base, whereas the Democratic Party has no regard for what their base wants. And in a brilliant op-ed for The Lever, David Sirota explains why this is the case. So it's titled, It is Time for Democrats to Fear Their Own Voters. And I wanted to read you a couple of paragraphs because this is really important. He writes, while Republican normie voters were being radicalized by Fox News and talk radio, Democratic normie voters were being anesthetized by NPR. The New York Times, The Atlantic, and MSNBC, which taught them to believe that an extremist like John Roberts is a lovable moderate, Mike Pence is an American hero, George Bush is a decent guy, and an operative who installed Sam Alito on the court is a warrior for democracy. That media machine convinced Democratic normies to believe the highest calling of citizenship was to simply line up behind party-approved candidates, crush progressive challengers in primaries, and vote blue no matter who in general elections, and then do nothing more, even when electable conservative Democrats lost and the few winners produced no change. The worst thing anyone could do, they taught voters, was criticize, pressure, or protest Democratic leaders to try to get them to do anything. Quote, politicians respond to only one thing. Power, wrote ta Coates back in 2011. This is not the flaw of democracy. It's the entire point. It's the job of activists to generate and apply enough pressure on the system to affect change. That's how the American right ultimately brought us to this horrible moment. They conditioned Republican voters to actually expect and demand things and punish the those who wouldn't deliver. That same attitude is what's needed from Democratic voters now, not just rage aimed at the conservative ideologues turning back the clock, but also rage at the Democrats who control the government today. Those elected officials must be forced kicking and screaming against their own desires to actually produce, not tomorrow, now. And I'll link you to the full article. It's worth the read. Democratic Party voters have been conditioned to not expect anything. And, you know, they are in this situation where the Democratic Party blames them if elections are lost. They don't blame themselves. They're never introspective, and that really is a serious problem. And I'm currently rereading Howard Zinn's um, The People's History of America, and I've got to say, at every point in time where it mattered, liberals have been useless, spineless, and they often went along with McCarthyism or abuse of the conservatives in the country until activists demanded that they act by getting really rowdy and exerting so much pressure on Democrats they had no choice but to act. And we're at a moment where Democratic Party voters have to do the same thing. When they tell you that the solution to the threat Republicans pose to democracy is to vote, you reject that entirely. That is not the only solution. The solution is that Democrats must fight and people must make it known that they're unwilling to accept what the Democratic Party is selling them currently. We're not buying it any longer. It's time to get rowdy when they tell you, you know, don't don't be uncivilized. You reject that, okay? It's time to make the Democratic Party fear their voters because even if there are other institutional things that make them corrupt or inept, if they fear their voters, if they fear that there will be repercussions if they don't deliver, that will at least make us better off, better suited to stave off this threat of fascism. So, yeah, I'll leave that there. Everything that Nina Turner said was perfect, and it's incumbent on us to educate normie Democrats who consume CNN and MSNBC and make them realize you can't just accept everything that the Democratic Party tells you. You can't keep punching left and blaming Bernie bros or blaming third parties. The onus is on Democrats. They have power currently, and if they fail to deliver, that's on them, and we can't let them fail. We have to force their hand, period, end of story.